Hey kids, this is Mr. and Fly here, hope you're well. Now, about four years ago, I made a video uh, about this very bike uh, and about how to modify the back end to uh, make it a little bit sharper. Well, times have moved on and I think it's time to have another little crack at the bulbous back end on the CRF 250L. So if you're interested in that, stick around and stay tuned. Okay, so on that video that I uh, made about four years ago, what I basically did was uh, I chopped off, there was like a plastic monstrosity that hangs down here on the standard bike. It does act as a little bit of a mud guard, but it looked hideous. So I chopped that off uh, and I mounted a slightly smaller, slightly illegal, uh, number plate on here. And it does tidy it up a little bit, but uh, I think there's more to be done. It's still got this hideous backlight, which I don't really like the look of. Uh, these indicators are pretty old school and it's just generally a bit plastically around the back and can be tidied up. So uh, this then is time to call in my friends at RNG who recently sent me a tail tidy and some new indicators for the back here. I'm going to attempt to fit it. I am technically inept. How I can fitting a tail tidy be, I don't know, but uh, I'm going to have a crack at it. It's more of a before and after video rather than the how-to because I might cock the whole thing up as I go, who knows, but uh, anyway, let's get cracking with it. I'll show you what's in the box before I get started. Okay, here we are, RNG tail tidy. Let's see what they've sent me in the box. All right, first off, how do we get in? Uh, da, da, da. Bingo bongo, the paperwork. Right, so these are the little uh, micro LED indicators that I think are just going to look so much better than those uh, old school bulbous ones. Uh, I'm hoping they're just kind of plug and play. Not entirely sure. Let's hope the instructions are good. So there's those. A uh, bit of uh, bubble wrap, and then we've got the uh, actual tail tidy itself, which looks pretty sturdy bit of kit. So that's definitely going to look neater than the plastic monstrosity that's there at the moment. Uh, got some uh, more wiring, which I assume is to do with the indicators, don't know. Um, and we've got a replacement backlight as well that uh, presumably fits on the top there somewhere. All right, let me get this all unpacked. I'll better have a little read of the instructions, then we'll go from there. Right, so I've uh, got everything out of the box. This is basically what you get. Uh, laid it out in the same way as in the instructions. The instructions are pretty comprehensive. Uh, in fact, there's eight pages of them, so uh, I'll just work through them step by step and I'll, uh, I'll show you as I crack on on the bike. I won't, I won't actually show you every single step because it'll be a very boring video, but uh, let me show you what it looks like now and then uh, when I'm done. Okay, so this is before I've actually uh, done anything to it. This is what I'm starting with. Right, let's crack on. Right. First thing, remove four bolts under here, just there. Four. Yeah, looks better already. Okay, so I've learned over the years that whenever you do a job like this on a motorbike, no matter how simple it may seem, they're never as straightforward as they should be. So having now uh, taken off the old light cluster, unplugged the electrics and so on, I'll read on the instructions that I've actually got to now chop this off uh, because I'm going to have to do some soldering of the new wiring. So uh, suddenly it's got a lot more technical than I expected. So uh, we're going to do some chopping, which is always a little bit wiring. And then I've got to do some soldering. So uh, let's move over to the soldering line. So this is the stuff that I really hate doing because there's no turning back once you've done this. So basically I really need to reuse this bit of wiring, so I'm going to cut it as far up as I can, if I can. I'm not even sure I can with these little cutters that I've got. Let's see what I can do. Come on, cut you devil. Gotcha. Got it. Right, I need to uh, just cut this back a bit now and uh, make those wires ready for soldering. 
Okay, so here we come to major cock up number one in this particular install. Even though I read the instructions again and again, I couldn't work out exactly where it was saying to cut this wire. So I cut it as far up as I could, and then having cut it off, I couldn't work out how you connected the indicators according to the instructions. So uh, that was a bit confusing. Then I noticed that uh, there are these connectors for the indicators beyond the bit that I've cut. So I've come to the realisation that actually I've cut that too short, and I should have cut it there so I can reuse these for the indicators. So what I'm going to have to do now is cut that off there, unplug these indicators, reconnect this short bit to this bit, somehow neatly soldering it, uh, and then I'm back to uh, where I can continue from there and splice from beyond there. So, as I said, these things are always way more complicated than you think they're going to be. I've cocked that up royally. At least I've worked out how it works now. I'll chop that off and I'll reconnect that back onto there so I can continue with my surgery. What a pain. Right, next cut then. I'm going to go as far as I can up here. Right, I'm going to splice this bit back onto that bit. I can work out how these unplug. Why are these connectors always so darn tricky? Is it a lift or is it a push? Who the hell knows? Looks like it's a lift. Yeah, I think I need a screwdriver for that. Lift and pull. There we go. Lift and pull. Bingo. Right, now I can trash that. Now what I've got to do is solder those wires all back together again. What a pain. So I've got that, and then strip these back so I can solder those onto the new brake light, and then I can plug the indicators into there and we should be good. What a nuisance. Oh well, recovered. Alrighty, I've now soldered everything to what I believe is the right cable. Uh, but before I actually mount anything on the bike, what I'm going to do is actually plug this in, and before I finalise these connections, I'm going to plug it in on the bike and just check that everything works. Right, this is the crucial test then. I've uh, plugged the uh, main wiring loom back in. I've got the indicators just resting here and the light and everything. I've made sure nothing's touching anything it shouldn't be before I wind these up with insulating tape. I'm now going to turn the bike on, make sure everything works as it should before I finalise stuff. Make sense? Right, turning on now. Well... I'm glad to see that that works, um, and there's a number plate light on as well. I'm just going to check the indicators. Uh, no, that's not working. And the other indicator. No, indicators are dead. That's annoying. Let's check the brake light. Brake light works there. And there. The brake light's working, but not the indicators. Hmm. What's going on there, then? Okay, so a bit of head scratching, and uh, I think the only thing, having to trace the wires back, the connections all look good. The only thing that can be wrong is that these are the wrong way round, because I made a guess uh, on which way round they go. So I've swapped those round on each indicator. So let's see now if that works. Right, power. Got the rear light. There's one. Let's go for the right indicator. Oh, and the left one's flashing. Well, that's encouraging. So we've got a left indicator. So if I go the other way, whoops. There we go. That one's working. Excellent. The only issue is they're the wrong way around, but I've just have to mark them up. So, when at the moment, if I go left indicator, this is the left one. So I'm just going to stick a little uh, label on there, so I know that's the left. Left. Okay. So now I know it's all working correctly, albeit the, the uh, indicators flash a bit quicker than I would like. But I'll do some research on that later. Uh, I'm going to tidy up all these wires, get some insulating tape, and get them wrapped up properly and neatly, and uh, basically rebuild the back end of the bike, and then uh, we'll see what she looks like all tidied up. Right, so I've just covered all those connections that I soldered on um, with some insulating tape, and then I can, so I know they're not going to touch each other, and then I'm going to uh, just bind that up neatly as well. There's some more tape up there, and uh, we should be good to reinstall. Okay, so back to the back of the bike. This is all nicely neatened up. Pleased with that. So the wires just run under there, and that sits outside the plastics. Which I'm not going to nip any wires. Back on there. The large ones at the back. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Okay, just when I thought everything was going well, and it was going all right, I've come across another problem. So, um, Basically, when, if I hold the rack up, which is important to me because the rack mounts my uh, top box on, it's going to go here, 
like so. And the, uh, the, the rack is actually mounted to this hole at the back here. Now the problem is this hole at the back here is where those micro indicators would otherwise have been mounted. So I'm certainly not happy about the micro indicators holding the rack in place. They're just not strong enough to do that. It's not a big enough bolt. So I need to find another place to put the indicators. So the obvious spot, of course, if the indicators can't go in that hole, which is where they would have normally gone, the obvious place is to try and put them here. So uh, I think what I'll do is I'll take this bracket off again and I'm going to drill a hole in the middle of each side and I'm going to mount these micro indicators actually to the tail tidy in that way. So hopefully that's going to work. I'll just uh, hold things up to make sure that there's nothing else that's going to snag, but I think that's the next little problem to get around. Well, this has definitely been one of those projects where if anything can go wrong, it absolutely has. It's been an absolute nightmare. Even drilling the holes on the bracket uh, was a pain because it turned out the one drill I needed was an 8mm drill and that was the one drill I didn't have. So uh, I drilled up to 7.5mm and then went and saw my mate Rog and borrowed an 8mm drill. So eventually got that drilled. I've got that uh, now mounted back on again. The indicators are back uh, now on that little, um, on, on the mount in the way that I said. I've just got to rebuild it, connect up, rebuild the rest of the bike and then uh, we'll see how she looks. To black. There you go. Black goes to red. And orange goes to that blue. And then the one with the tape that I put on goes onto the one with the tape. Nice and neat. Right, let's check she works. Right, turn her on. Backlight working good. Number plate lights good. Indicator left, right. Cancel brakes. Good brakes. Good. Okay, so that's all working, except the indicators run a bit quick. I'm not entirely sure what to do about that. Be interested if you know how to uh, slow those down. Do you let me know? So there we go, bike's all back together, and uh, I have to say, it was uh, quite a bit of uh, aggravation getting there, but actually, it does look an awful lot better. I'll see if I can get you a before and after picture. So here's the before, and here's the after. Okay, does that look any better? Hope so. Uh, I think it looks a lot tidier. I'd much prefer these indicators, even though I've got this flashing issue that I need to sort out at some point. Um, but it's much more solid, it's much more tidy at the back end. I think it looks absolutely great. Uh, so really pleased with that job. So I know what you're asking, or thinking, how much does this thing cost? Well, let me just tell you, the uh, tail tidy itself for the Honda CRF, RNG make them for all sorts of bikes of course, uh, is £82.99. And the uh, little RNG micro indicators for a pair, £28.49. So there we go. So uh, basically, 100 quid if you want to tidy up the back end of your CRF, 250L, like that. All right, I hope that's been of some interest to you. It just, uh, these jobs always take longer than you think, don't they? It's, it certainly does when I'm doing them anyway, but uh, I'm pleased with the end result. All right, I uh, hope that was of some interest. Look forward to speaking to you again soon. Till then, this has been the Mr. Fly. Cheerio.